I'm Katie Hacker, and our in-depth lesson continues with a feature on the element of water with Eva Sherman. Welcome, Eva. Hi, Katie. Nice to be here. I'm so glad you're here, and we have never done water casting, so I'm really excited to show everyone how to do oh, this. Oh, this, this is a really fun technique and a great way to use up your scrap silver. Oh, well, we're always looking for ways yes. to use up the scrap, right? Yes. As metalsmiths, we end up with a ton of scrap. So, um, yeah, you can use fine silver, you can use sterling silver, you can use argent... Well, I've not done argentium, so I, I can't address that, but... Um, you, and you can actually mix them. I kind of keep, you know, mix them together. Oh, wow. And, it's a little experimental. Yes. And um, we actually will purify it with a little bit of casting grain because some of our scrap silver has solder that we can't get out. And, okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a look first at these pieces right here that show what we're going for. So you don't really know what you're going to get when no, you do this No, it's a very um, organic, sort of a serendipitous process, and I don't know exactly what the factors are. Sometimes you get smaller pores, sometimes you get bigger pores. Um, I know that you need to keep the water cold because you're going to be pouring molten metal into it, and um, if the water is not cold, you'll get metal that sticks to the bottom, which is what oh, happened in this bucket. we might get to see that <laughs> in a bit. All right, so how do you get started when you have your new equipment? Okay, so you start out with the crucible and this is a brand new crucible. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is condition the crucible. And you do that by adding a little bit of borax. So I would put maybe a half a teaspoon of borax in here and spray some flux. Borax is very fine and powdery, so it will tend to kind of float in the air. So uh, the flux actually consolidates it. And then we would torch this. It will take probably three to five minutes um, until it turns to glass and it coats the bottom of your new crucible with glass. So that um, then will keep your molten silver from sticking to the ceramic crucible. If you're going to do this with different types of metal, like bronze or, or gold even, you want to have a dedicated crucible for each type of metal. Okay, so this one is all ready to go. You can see the inside has been... Yes, I've already conditioned this. This has been used a few times already. Um, each time I do it, I add just a touch of flux and a touch of borax just to kind of... Um, keep the surface because anything that is molten will pour off. It will not mix with the molten silver, but it will um, pour off. So, you know, I just want to always add a little bit of extra. Okay, so we also want our safety glasses before yes. we begin. And another safety thing is that you want to do this in a well ventilated area. Um, you're going to be heating up silver and some flux and some other things, so you always want good ventilation. Okay. And you have protected your work surface with a tray. You have a solderite board here. Yes, and then the other item I have is a graphite rod. And this is so that I can actually reach into the molten silver. This does not transfer heat. Oh, okay. So if I need to move things around, I can reach in there with this. Okay. Oh, I can't wait to see yeah. it. And so I usually start out with about a half an ounce of silver, so that's about what that is. And I just cut up some of my old scrap silver. So we've got about a half an ounce in here. Okay. So. Let's we'll flux. And cool. you're going to add your granules as well? Yes, I'm going to add my purifying um, sterling silver casting grain. And you can actually use just casting grain for casting. You don't have to use scrap, scrap silver. You, yeah, I've done that before. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. So um, just to recap, we have borax and flux, flux casting grain, yep. and some scrap. Yes. Okay. About and half we an have ounce it of in scrap. our conditioned crucible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and then um, we're gonna. I use map gas. It's a nice hot torch, and um, I usually don't hold on to this until I get kind of towards the end. Um, so I'm gonna just turn on the torch, and this will take a few minutes because the silver actually has to be a molten ball. Um, if it's not totally molten, I'll give you some inf indications on how to tell. Um, then when you pour it, it's just gonna turn into a lump. So, are we ready to okay. turn the torch on? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And I've actually done some things where I stop at this point because sometimes just the, um, the silver melted together but not molten makes an interesting texture. I call that kitchen sink right. casting. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that orange beading, that's basically the, uh, the, the flux and the borax. It's just liquid glass or molten glass. So you can tell part of it is starting to turn into a mass there. Yes. 
and I'm just helping to consolidate. The other thing is you don't want to use this graphite rod too much because it does act as a heat sink. Oh, so it'll prevent your silver from melting? Well, or take longer? Right. Oh, but I close, right? But you see how it, now it's still orange, so that's not quite what we want it to be at. Um, we want it to be like mercury. And so I'm just going to kind of run it around here and pick up everything. And as I roll it around, I can see if there's any part of the silver that is still um, hard. Like sometimes you get it melted on the outside, but not quite on the inside. So I'm gonna, you got to keep the heat on it. And then I'm going to preheat. See how it turned orange again? Yeah. As soon as the heat comes off, it starts to solidify. So you keep your torch right on the end I there. I keep my torch, yep, so that I, when it goes over the edge, it's still molten. Oh, so cool. Okay. It's so quiet after that. Okay, so I'm just going to put these over here. And, you know, it is a little bit um, unpredictable what you get. Um, so this time I got small pieces. I got a few interesting cups, but sometimes you get these little snake-like elements. Anything that you get in your pour that you don't like, you can just recast it. So right. sometimes we do it two, three, four times. Um, this time I didn't get anything really large, like that ring over there. One, I don't, I'm not quite That's sure right. how that happened, but it kind of all stayed together. It was like one pour, and it all stayed together, so I had that really unique organic element. Well, yeah, well, I would imagine the more you do this, the more choices you have as far as the pieces. Yes. Yeah. And then um, what happens when you try it with wire? Oh, so um, there's actually another way, and this, you get really a lot more consistent um, cup shapes. I'm going to just put this down here. And so you're going to take a cross locking tweezer and we'll turn that torch back on. Okay. And so you just put you right um, where the blue uh, tip is, that's the hottest part of the flame. So you want to put the tip of your wire into that hot part of the flame, and this is how you draw a bead on a wire, but here we're just gonna let it drop and fall into the water. I'll do a couple more and then we'll see what they look like. What gauge wire are you using? I'm for using that? 14 gauge wire. So then you can just see what you get. Yeah, so, oh, I should actually Do you pour, some out? pour a little bit of this off of here. Okay, come here. Then it's a treasure hunt. Yes. So these came out a little bit flat but they're still usable for as a design element. So, sure. Anyway, a lot of times, in fact, most times, they come out a little bit more like this, a, a little bit more like a cup shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are cool, and you can nest things down inside. Yes, so, so when we design with these, we will either, uh, most of the time, what I make is either a ring or a pendant. Sometimes you get lucky and you get two pieces that are really similar, so you can make a pair of earrings. But um, most of the time I end up um, filing a flat piece on the back side. Yeah, let's um, see with this piece. Like, for example, you have this ring already made here. Yes. So, yeah, let's put this together. Sure. Let's put it right here. So, um, you need flat to flat. So, this is fairly flat on the back, and so I'm gonna make a little flat area on this ring. And for example, on this piece that you're working on now, this is very shiny, this is matte. Some of the pieces that we looked at earlier have a little bit of a gold tone to them. So um, these are in various 
Yes, parts because of the um, what happens after, if it's a sterling silver, it's got copper in it, so when it comes out, it's got a little bit of fire scale. So um, you're going to want to put it in a pickle pot and clean the fire scale off, and then when you burnish it with a brass brush, then you'll get it back to the shiny metal. Okay. So um, this is a pre-made ring shank, so it's already shiny. Well, it won't be after I torch it, but I like to just make a flat area on the top of the ring, and then we'll turn this upside down, and we're gonna do a little sweat soldering right there. So uh, let's see, I've got some easy solder here, and uh, first thing we'll do, we'll play, spray, spray a little flux on it. Okay, and then I'm going to cut some solder. Oh, come here. And we'll just put that solder right on top there. And now I'm going to switch over to this smaller butane. Okay. Just because that gives you better control over the flame yes, and the piece. And, um, get my solder pick just in case it moves out of place. Like they like to do. Yeah, so I find if I kind of sneak up on it a little, there's oh, there the, you go. Yep, it goes pretty quickly. It fast. Um, if I, usually because of the wet flux, um, as it boils when you heat it, that kind of moves the solder out of place. So I like to kind of evaporate the flux first, but this happened so fast I didn't even need to. Yeah, you didn't. So I'm gonna set this up here like this. So you have your flat spot down. Yes. So I have a flat to flat connection, and then um, sometimes you have to raise your brick up or put yes, something under and there to build it up. Sometimes um, you know it just doesn't want to cooperate, but I am the boss. I will make it. I like it. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to flux. And then usually when you're soldering two pieces of metal together, you want to put more heat on the larger mass of metal because the, obviously it takes a little bit longer to heat up the larger mass. So I'll put most of my heat on the ring shank. And then what I'm doing is I'm kind of watching for that solder to flow. Um, if, you, if you've taken metal smithing classes, you know that it's not actually the torch that makes your solder flow, it's the heat of the metal. So you have to get the, the uh, metal up to temperature. Uh, looks a little shiny there. Yeah. Oh, oh not no. Not quite, not quite. So close. Sorry, I'm going to get That's over fine. on this side. Quench it, and then um, we have a little element that we could actually, we could solder a pearl post in there and put a pearl on it, or we could solder a little tube bezel and make it look something like that. So um, there's all kinds of design possibilities here that you could do depending on what kind of a cast you get. Um, but there's some other casting that you can do. Um, we've, this, these pieces were made with broom straw. So um, what, what you would do if you wanted to do some straw casting is soak this. You want to have this thoroughly wet, like I usually soak it overnight, and then also put some water in the can, and then instead of pouring it into a bucket of water, you pour your molten metal down into the straw. And then you want to have another bucket because you're going to grab this with some tongs and quench the whole thing because sometimes you set the straw on fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so when... These, so these pieces here, mm -hmm. are these the what's left behind? Yes. And the straw burns away? Yes, so the, you can imagine kind of that the metal goes down into the spaces in between the straw. And so as, um, as it fills the spaces, it creates these interesting little crevices. 
Yeah, it is really interesting. I yeah. can see this going a lot of different ways. It looks like bark, you yes. know, like tree. Yeah. It's a tree. Yeah, yeah. And then these pieces here, you did, I, um, I guess that these were in rock salt, but you said no, no. Beans. Beans. Yes. So there's an actual bean still in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, these haven't been cleaned up. They just kind of came out of the out of the bucket of beans looking like that. Yeah, that is such a um, different way of getting some different techniques into yes, your work. Yeah. So, And I love it because it's very organic. It's kind of unpredictable, um, but you can almost always take whatever you pour and turn it into something cool. Yeah, definitely. Let's take a look at these pieces in the front here. These are some different steps in the process, right? Yes. So um, this is what it looks like when it comes out of the pickle. So it's a little bit cleaner. And then this one has been burnished. Um, this one has fire scale on it because it had a little um, uh, tube soldered to the back. So this is going for to be a pendant. And then this one has the tube bezel soldered in place, but not the stone set. Um, but it is... Um, it's getting ready. Yeah, it's getting ready, yes. Yeah. Well, you can use up all your scraps and get yes. really creative at the same yes. time. Yeah, yeah, so you can either um, recycle your scrap for money or you can recycle it and turn it into cool jewelry. This is fantastic. Thank you so much, Eva. You're very welcome.